Hi, I'm Zanny from Real Story. Today we're talking to Peter Mockery, actor, presenter, producer, and auctioneer. Can you tell us why storytelling is important? We've been telling stories for hundreds of thousands of years. You know, we were Neanderthals, and we'd go out and we'd bring home some food, we'd set up a campfire, and we'd talk about how our day went. All right? Then you progress through to the Greeks. Now, the Greeks used to have Dionysian festivals, which were festivals that you planted crops by the moon, from full moon to full moon, right? And they'd have a thing called the chorus, which is in the middle of the festival, big bonfires and whatever. And they'd tell stories that Plato and Aristotle had written. And they'd have a chorus. Anyhow, there was this guy called Thespis. And Thespis said one day, hmm, instead of just reading these lines out, I'm going to act it out. So he stood outside of the chorus and told the story by acting it out. And that's why we're called thespians. All right. So we've been telling stories for so long. And you, you can have bullet points. And you, if you don't weave them into a good story, then you're lost. Because in this day and age, everything happens so very quickly. We used to tell stories in four or five minutes' time. Now it's 90 seconds. Oh, and you're gone, you know. I think that's why stories are important. If storytelling is really important, how can you tell great stories in a business environment? You gather your facts and you weave it into a beginning, a middle and an end. You know, if you start poorly, you're going to lose people. If you've got no middle and you've got no meat to the story, you're not going to engage people. And if you just peter out at the end, they're on their phones going, you know what? This isn't very good, click dial tone. So in a business sense, tell a story about the facts of what you've got and you will engage people. What are the things that you need to keep in mind to be able to present that story really well? Sense of humour. As I said, a beginning, a middle and an end. Engaging factors, have structure to your story and leave them with something memorable. Have a punchline for everything, you know? Uh, tell a story as if you are telling your family and if they enjoy it, then put it into a business sense and it'll probably work because I don't know about you, but my family are my harshest critics and if I tell a story and they're not like, hmm, I know that I've got to go back to the drawing board and just look through, I look for a through line to the message, beginning, middle and end. Is there structure to the whole thing? Has it got a sense of humour? Is it relevant? And if you really want, what's the moral of the tale? You know, a lot of people forget that. Why are you telling the story? Has it got something to do with developing our sense of awareness of ourselves? Because relate it to human beings, you know? You've got to make it real. Show me your heart, make it real, or forget about it. What are the things that we keep in mind to make sure that presentation to camera is really engaging? Okay. So your heart rate raises to 160 over 90. Your thyroid is going ka-chunk, ka-chunk, ka-chunk. Your adrenal glands are secreting. You're watching a bead of sweat going down the back of your neck. And then you stand in front of a camera and you forget that that's a mechanical device. And if you don't personalise it, number one, and change the nervous system inside of you to think about something else other than, oh my God, I'm standing in front of a camera and I'm really scared. So personalize it. I always use my wife or my son. Instead of it being a mechanical device, I visualize her. Brunette, green eyes, beautiful. Wow, it changes how I feel. Instead of talking to a mechanical device, number one, sit still or stand still. You watch the newsreaders, Peter Overton, Sandra Sully, all those greats, Jeremy Fernandez on the ABC, Juanita Phillips, they're all still and the energy is going into their voice. Okay? Instead of doing this, the Stevie Wonder's moving all around, you know? Because as soon as you're moving around, my brain goes, why are they moving? And it takes off the transaction of what they're talking about. So connect with one person. Breathe properly. You know when you're in English class and the teacher says, at the full stop, you take a full beat. And then you breathe at the end of that full stop. And in that moment, say I say something like, um, it's very cold today, full stop. I take a breath. 
what people are doing in that full stop is processing what I've said. If you get up there, you've had a coffee, you're going at a million miles an hour, ding, 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 and they're going, didn't understand a word. Have a rhythm. Have a conversation with one person down the barrel of the camera. What's their takeaway? What do you want people to say? You know, it's not about you and your package. It's about your content. And what story are you telling to change people's lives? Make it relevant. Show me your heart. Make it real. Or forget about it. So you talk about showing your heart when you're presenting a story to camera. Mm. Authenticity is a hot topic this year. Mm. How do you, in a business environment, show your heart without it being a risk? It's never a risk to show your heart. If you want to put shades on top of who you are, we'll, we'll know. I'm going to swear now, Zani. We have bullshit detectors, you know. Things have changed in the world. We used to watch television on a Sunday night. We'd sit down, we'd have a meal with the folks, we'd watch the news, wonderful world of Disney, 60 minutes and a movie. Gone. It's gone. I'm on my tablet, my son's on his phone, my wife's on the PC, whatever. It's changed up. So in a business sense, if you think you've got to pile on stuff to make it real, no, it's not about covering yourself up. It's about showing us who you really are. And that's what authenticity is, of showing emotion. In my classes, I, you know, people, they don't like to cry. They don't want to show weakness, whereas for me, Weakness is not showing us crying. Show me who you really are. And that, I think, is what authenticity is. And in a business sense, what are you frightened of? Judgment? We're all frightened of what people think of us. Let me give you an example. Danny DeVito is a diminutive man. He's about four foot 11, five ones, about that height. John Goodman is a larger man. They don't care what you think of them. They have trust and belief in their story and they go in there and they tell it straight down the barrel or in an acting sense. So if you think, oh, I'm frightened of people and you pile all this crap on, we know subconsciously we think there's something wrong and we don't know what's wrong, but it doesn't work. Just be real. You run a fantastic course about how to develop your presentation skills to camera and a lot of it is about being your authentic self and finding that. Um, how do you bring that out in people? How do you bring someone to their, to their core? It's all about breathing. If you're nervous, <laughs> we can sense it. And it's incongruent with what the people at home are doing because they're just breathing normally. They've got the mouse and they're watching the iPad. If you're <laughs> and nervous, it doesn't work. If you want to be real, Get connected to what keeps you alive, and that is breathing into your organic center, into your diaphragm. If you want to be really good at this, learn how to relax. De Niro, Pacino, Streep, all the great actors, Russell Crowe, they do a warm-up before they go and perform. They get connected to who they are. They do a yoga class, and number one, they're breathing into their spirit. You watch. I'm calmer than <laughs> I'm terrified, you know? It's easy, just breathe properly. <laughs> As you breathe. <laughs> All our orifices are pointed out. Ears, mouth, nose, and eyes. Everything is looking out. The answers aren't out there. The answers are inside of you. And that's why Buddha and yoga exponents Talk about how important breathing is. Same for when you stand up in front of a camera. As I said to you, everything's going really, really fast. And on top of that, people have a coffee. Ah, 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 you know, and they're like this all the time. You see them. So calm down. Breathe into your organic center. Breathe into your knees and your feet. Just bring it back home. That's the secret. So once you've brought it back home, is preparation important to presenting to camera? Absolutely. What are you going to say? I teach a lot of people now, and I'm very grateful for being able to, to pass on what I learned at NIDA 30 years ago. And in, the, and in the last 30 years, I've taught 
some pretty high profile guys and CEOs of big multinational companies. They don't have a lot of time, but they forget you've got to prepare. If you stand up here, and you, especially if you're doing just a speech to camera without an auto cue or a teleprompter and you're winging it, you can get lost like that. You start thinking about things and then your mind starts to wander and you think, oh, is my tie straight? Or have I wore the right colors today? And you come off message. I see it happening all the time. So prepare your script, get your iPhone, put it on the mirror and just practice what you're going to do and what you're going to say. So many people forget that a rehearsal is so very important. You want to get up there and wing it? Good, but the one time you screw up will be the one time that you regret you didn't do preparation. So important. What can an amazing presentation of a story achieve for a presenter? Changing people's lives. They don't remember what you say. They remember how you made them feel. They may not remember the points, but they'll say, he made me feel something, and that's the most important dynamic of telling a story. And you've got to work out what you're going to say before you do it. That's what I teach my students. Who are you and what do you believe? You want to stand in the light, tell a story. If you don't believe it, I will know. And that's what great actors do. They lie with authority. How does an actor bring a story to life? It's like making a cloak. You embroider it with research. If you can imagine a navy coat, not unlike this one, and I start weaving facts into it. And then when you've got all of that knowledge in your coat, you put it on and you stand there in the wardrobe. You know, great actors, Alec Guinness, always talked about the shoes, as soon as you put the shoes on. I did a show 20 years ago called Water Rats. I'd never been a detective. So Hal McElroy said, why don't you go out with the Par Parramatta detectives? So I did. And I went to the morgue and I saw a dead body. I went to the rifle range. I loaded a nine millimeter Glock and pointed it at the target and the recoil almost hit me in the head. And I'm going, okay. And then I learned to straighten my arm and then I fired it and I went, wow. And that was the basis for the character of Knocker. So you do the research, add little bits and pieces, put the cloak on with the wardrobe, away you go. Trust and belief. Say the words. To add your list of skills and roles that you play in life, you're a real estate agent, a real estate auctioneer. Mm -hmm. what, does storytelling have a place in selling real estate? Oh, absolutely. As Soon as I walk onto a property, I've got to think about where I'm going to stand and how I'm going to sell this property before I ask for opening offer or bid, where do we go? Where do we start, ladies and gentlemen? And you've got to tell a story of you're close to the amenities, the shops, the parks, the schools, where are you? Also, the contract. You've got to say where we are and do the legalities, all that. You're telling a story to sell the property for the people who are going to buy it. And real estate is the number one thing it's the most important thing because before you do anything tonight, you've got to find a roof for your children and your spouse and your family. And if you don't, you're out there in the elements. And we're going back to what we talked about with primates and we've evolved. So yeah, you tell a story. Also, I have uh, in partnership with a guy called Jamie Laprie, who uh, owns a company called Main Collective. We do high-end videos. We're always telling stories about why you should buy this particular property with stories. So we put a drone up to give location. We are always doing you know, ramps, ramping up different speeds, black and white color. We're trying to get people's interest. And the thing about, the interesting thing about it is we used to do it in, you know, you could do it in four or five, six minutes. Now it's 90 seconds. And you've got to adapt, as you guys well know, to the times. The, this is the digital era, you know, we've grown through the industrial, the agricultural, all those things. So we're in the digital thing. Everything's got to be 90 seconds. And you've got to tell a story in that time because most people, gone. Gone. Unless you're telling it economically. So important. What good has come out of the year for you? There are two things in life. Love and fear. Fear 
is being connected to your ego and love is being connected to your spirit. So all of this went off and we all went, what are we going to do? And I was terrified for my business because mine is people. I stand in front of people and I say, let me entertain you and change you. And I was terrified of Zooming and computers. So to answer your question, the one thing is that I've learned patience and I've learned to love technical stuff. I'm a people person. <laughs> so, you know, I had to go and buy a new XPS 15 7590 Dell. I don't know how to run these suckers, but now I'm really proud. I've got a, an AX700 camera. I know how to film people. I know how to put it in. I know how to edit. I know how to do color grading. <laughs> so that has happened in this year. And that's what I'm very grateful for. It wouldn't have happened if COVID. I think that we've all slowed down. Everybody was saying we're getting just a little bit too big for our britches. And I think everybody has become just a little bit more self-aware. I think it has reminded us that we're all human and actually we're all the same animal and we are all animals and we all need to look after each other. Yeah. And business environments have put mental health at the forefront and allowed people to work from home and be with their families when they need to. And th the world has become not a softer pace, but just a more caring place. Loving. Yeah, love and fear, you know. But there's nothing you can do. You know, you're born naked, stupid and alone. You live the arc of life and you die naked, stupid and alone. And you learn stuff for your soul to self-evolve in that time. Now, in my instance, the world is round. Our iris is round. Hakana mutata, the circle of life. So if you understand that, you take away the fear of death and you think, wow, I think I'm going to be OK. All we have to do is let go, let go of the fear and just trust and believe. That's what life's about.